Hi everybody, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Michelle and I have a YouTube channel called All Garden Jargon. And I am making a video today for the first time. I'm making pickles. It has taken me hours to set this concoction up on my, on my counter to share with you um, how I'm gonna make pickles. I basically watched a couple YouTube videos on a couple people's recipes and um, combined a couple of the ideas and ingredients and this is my first go at it. So I have no idea how it's gonna turn out, but um, they're basically like a quick pickle kind of thing, I guess, I don't know. I don't know what the difference is. I don't use a pressure canner. I actually just use a water bath canner, which is here. Um, that pot that I got um, was from the thrift store and I paid maybe eight bucks for it. There was no rust or dings or holes, so I bought it. And then um, I also found my jars, a lot of my jars at the thrift store for 75 cents. And I had a coupon, so they were even cheaper. Um, but I did make sure to purchase all of the bar, no, ball and cur jars that I could possibly find. And I found two different styles of um, jars. They're both wide mouth, as you can see. And one is long and slender like this, which I think is great because some of the uh, cucumbers that I'm pickling are called the green monster. So they're very long, like a foot long, this big. And if I cut them in half, they fit perfectly in here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just basically go through um, how to pickle these pickles with you on a video. And this will be my first time trying to edit a video as well. So wish me luck on that. And thank you for joining me. So basically what I've done is I've taken all my cucumbers, as you see in this bucket, and I've chopped them all up already. Um, I had some shorter ones that I speared up and then the bigger ones, obviously I cut in half and put them there. I also had some other pickles from um, the church garden that I'm using. These pickles are cucumbers, I should say, are um, Monica style cucumbers. And these are not mature yet. Um, I accidentally picked these off thinking they were the pickling cucumbers and they were not. And the Monica cucumber, I'm really excited to try when it is mature, but this is a baby Monica cucumber, which is a slicer, which would get about six to eight inches long. So it's a couple days not ripe, but this is a national pickling cucumber and it's got the little bumps on it. The Monica cucumber has zero bumps on it, and I believe the bumps are spines and no spines. Spineless, and they just have little spikies, and I just rubbed them off with a brush. So I have a, several of these guys that I'm going to pickle whole, because I've never tried that before. I'm not going to slice those up. And then these two little Monica ones, I'm, I thought I had three, but I guess just these two. I'm going to slice these up and put them in a jar and see what happens. I'm not sure what the flavor is. Um, also, the advice that I've been seeing on um, YouTube is cutting off the blossom end because there's some enzymes in the end that can cause it to be bitter and also to soften the pickle when it's pickling in the jar. Now, this is really crazy. A friend of mine just ate a fresh pickle. He had it in a, in a bowl with some vinegar on it and some dill sprinkled over the top and salt, and he was about to eat it as a snack. And he bit into it and I was FaceTiming him and he made the most terrible face. And I go, what's wrong? And he said, that tastes like cleaner. And I go, what did you, what did you put in there? Bleach? And he said, no, I put vinegar. He goes, but it tastes like a cleaner. What's wrong with this cucumber? And what I think was he might have bit into a portion of the cucumber that might have had the blossom end on. Because what I did when my green monster cucumbers were this long, I did the same thing. I sliced off the end and I tried it and it was bitter and nasty. And then I kept slicing closer to the inside of the pickle. And as I was tasting it, it was getting sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. So I think that that's what happens. I don't know if that happens by sitting on my counter because those green monsters have been sitting on my counter for about four days before I started this pickling process, or if it just happens when it's on the vine. So I wanted to share that information with you because that's something that I didn't even know. But I have bitten into cucumbers before in the past that tasted like disgusting, like there was a like a fertilizer on it or something. And it's the enzymes in the bottom of the cucumber, I believe, that's at the blossom end of the cucumber. So I just wanted to share that with you. 
Um, so I did cut off all the ends, the blossom ends of the cucumbers, and I've already set up all of my jars. Now the recipe that I'm using calls for two cloves of garlic, it calls for a teaspoon of peppercorns, it calls for um, some type of red pepper. Um, I'm using arbol red peppers. I don't even know how to say that, but that's it. Um, the name of the um, pepper, they're dried. So I think these are like crushed red peppers because there are seeds in here and I can see them. Um, it's not gonna make the pickles spicy to what I'm told. It's just gonna give it a little bit of heat. And they're dried, so I just got a big bag of, in bulk and it was only, no, oh, only four bucks, 356 for all of these peppers. So these will last me for quite a while. Um, so after the peppers, it also calls for um, some peppercorns and then also grape leaves. Well, I can't get my hands on grape leaves. I've had to go to my aunt's house and get them off of Concord grapes, but she's 20 minutes away. So she's, one of the recipes called for grape leaves, a couple grape leaves. If you don't have grape leaves, you can use green tea. Now what I found is all your green tea bags, one tea bag is a teaspoon, which is what each jar calls for. So I just sliced up the tea bags and put them in a little jar and scooped them and put tea in each and, each and every one of them. It says don't use black tea because it will discolor the water, which totally makes sense because when you make a whole pot of green tea, it's clear, nearly clear with a hint of green. Um, and then also dill. And I don't have fresh dill, so I got it from the store and I have it right here. So I'm gonna build this jar with you on the phone right now. Something else I wanted to share with you is how to crack garlic. Um, garlic cloves are right here and they're in this little paper, smooth paper, and you gotta get that off. Several years ago, I went down to visit my aunt. She was making pickles in the kitchen on the counter and she was literally taking a paring knife and pulling off the paper and peeling it like an apple almost. And I had watched so many cooking shows and I said, do you not know how to peel that garlic? And she said, I don't know what you're talking about. But all you do is you put the garlic on the cutting board, you take the flat side of a knife, lay it flat on there and you pound it just like that. And what it does is it breaks up all that paper and you're very easily able to pull the paper off of your garlic just like that and use that in your jar. So I'm gonna do that for two cloves of garlic. I'm gonna pound it again. And I like to smash them pretty hard and kind of pulverize them a bit because then the more it's smashed, the more exposure to the garlicky, yummy flavor is gonna get in that jar. So there's my garlic. And then a teaspoon of green tea. Teaspoon red peppercorns. peppers, two of those, and my dill. I don't know if you're supposed to leave the stems on. You probably should, but I'm just kind of breaking them off. And in this one, what I'm also going to do is my girlfriend came over this week and she brought me this whole entire jar of garlic scapes. Um, these are when your garlic in the ground bolts. This is the flower that comes out. I'm going to throw a couple of these guys in there. We'll see what happens. Gardening is an experiment as well as cooking. So I'm just gonna throw three scapes in here because I have them and I've never cooked with them and I've never used them before. So I'm gonna see what happens. But they smell delicious. There, I threw three scapes in there. Awesome, now my jars are ready. I have no idea how many jars these pickles are gonna fill because I've never done this before. So I may have gone overboard at my jars which I'm fine with. So I've also made my brine. Now the brine calls for 10 cups of water, two cups of white vinegar, at least 5% um, acidity, and a cup and a fourth, one and a fourth cup of canning salt. So I'm using this garlic salt, our pickling salt, never used it before in my life, so I'm trying it. I think I got this at the hardware store when I bought some lids for my um, jars. Um, let me turn my lids on. I'm gonna boil those for a second. Um, so canning salt, I also bought, um, I think this is just from Walmart. And when you read the um, ingredients, it says white distilled vinegar, 
diluted with water to 5% acidity. And I got this big old jar, jug I should say. And then I mixed a double batch of this with the vinegar, the water, and the salt in a big bucket over here. Um, Cause again, I don't know how much is gonna fill in these jars. So what I'm gonna do is after I use this, it's okay to save it in another pitcher. So I have an extra jug that I will pour the rest of this in and that will be my brine. And I'll just keep that handy for if I wanna make some refrigerator pickles down the road. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stuff all these jars. I'm gonna pour the liquid over the top of all of them and then I'll come back. Okay, so I stuffed most of these jars. Um, I didn't cram them like the video showed. I think um, some of the videos I've watched had like 50 pounds of cucumbers that they were trying to shove into these jars. I didn't pack them that tight, but I think I'm gonna have to. Um, one of the ways when pickling I've noticed on these videos is making sure you use a wide mouth jar. It's easier to stuff them. So I have these sliced pickle or cucumbers. I'm gonna shove them in here. And I just kind of lay the jar full sideways. Helps us get them in there easily. It's a small one. Um, the Green Monster had a lot of seeds, I noticed. The Green Monster, and um, which is fine. Um, the, Cause I mean, there's not a time that I've ever bought pickles at the store that I don't see seeds floating around in the jar. Um, I'll cram this one pretty tight. Get in there. Get in there, cucumber. Get in there. It'll become some delicious snacks. And there, there, there. And then I have these two left. Can't leave them out, right? Um, let's make a couple spears of this and find a jar to stick them in. Maybe I'll leave this one for a snack for later. Yeah, there's plenty of room in these. The Monica cucumber that I chopped up, um, very interesting. It Remember that was a slicer cucumber? Well, that one, um, the seeds were minuscule. They were so, so tiny. Um, okay, so I have these jars. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Toss this. And then what I did was purchased a wide mouth funnel. And then you just set it on the top here. And then I'm gonna um, pour in the brine into these jars. I'll be back. Okay, here we go. So I have um, thrown my lids into um, boiling water so that the seal softens and it sterilizes them. I filled all of my jars up um, to about a half inch um, to a quarter of an inch to the top. And I'm going to put the lids on top of here and then put the bands on. I don't have a magnet yet. I just started collecting my canning equipment and I don't have a magnet to get them out so I'm gonna use my tongs. Then also I was thinking about what the difference is in pickling and canning salt to regular salt. And I think it's just the coarseness of it because the pickling salt is fine like a powder. And I saw in another recipe that somebody used pink Himalayan salt, which is actually lower in sodium content, but I do have pink Himalayan salt. And it is kind of coarse, but I think I'll grind this up a little bit more when I run out of the pickling salt that I purchased like this and just use that because this whole thing, which is five pounds, was only $4 at Big Lots. I got this at Big Lots, pink Himalayan salt. And then when I looked at the ingredients of this stuff, pickling and canning salt, back here on ingredients, it's, I can barely pronounce this word, um, salt. That's it, salt. So it's just a very, very fine powder and it dissolves very quickly. So let me get these lids on. I also wiped down very, very good all of the edges 
to make sure that there was no debris on there or anything like that. These lids are brand new. Um, if you're going to want to preserve them and keep them for a while, you're going to want to use brand new lids. I do have the old lids that came off of them. The seal has obviously been used, but those would be a good idea to use if you're just doing some quick refrigerator pickles, which are pickles that don't need to be processed in a water bath can or anything like that. You just put the lid on and let them sit overnight and then they're fantastic pickles the next day. So those are the lids that could be used for that. There. Now I take the bands. And I did wash all of these pickles, or these pickle jars, in the dishwasher, as well as with the rings, to make sure that they were cleaned and sterile. I was going to do that today here in the kitchen, but with the stove going, getting that big old tub of water going, and um, it being close to 100 degrees outside today, I opted out. Like right now I'm hot because I don't have the fan going in here, just so you can hear me better. <laughs> and I put these on just, I'm not cranking them tight by any means. I'm tightening them up pretty good. And I have no idea how many of these will fit in my water bath canner. Um, I pre-measured that water in the water bath canner yesterday just to make sure that um, these will fit in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in I like my pickles crunchy, even when I buy them at the store. I buy the ones in the refrigerator section because I like them crunchy. And one of the videos that I watched, um, she suggests to get the water to about 180 degrees and keep it at 180 degrees for about 30 minutes and then take them out. So the water never gets to boil but that temperature does something to the cucumbers to make them stay crunchy. And they're gonna be gone by the time we eat them and see that they're soggy from sitting in the uh, pickle juice too long. Once you get them in the water bath, um, you gotta make sure that the water's at least a half an inch over the top of the jar. going to use this thing. <laughs> I guess that's what it's for, right? I'm a newbie. I'm first time. I don't know what I'm doing. All right. So they're all in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven jars. I do have a trivet, metal trivet that you're supposed to put at the bottom and set your jars on top, but this is too little for that big pot. So I'll use this for a smaller pot if I do something quick. Um, there's nothing on the bottom of this. Cross your fingers. And my water is only about a half inch over the top, so I'm going to add a little more water. And then I'm going to check my temperature because I was boiling it for quite some time before we started the video, and it might be... Um, to the temperature that we need. That's enough water. I'm using a candy thermometer and a deep fryer thermometer. This is what I got going. And I see where the mark is for 180. Let's see if that's where we're at. Temperature wise, just hit 150, 55. We're at about 165, so I'm going to turn the heat on and get the temperature to. Um, to the right temperature. I'm going to get the water to the right temperature and we will be back. Hi everybody.
everybody, I'm back. So because I added more water to the water can bath, is that what it's called? Water bath can. <laughs> I am new, I'm a newbie. Um, because I added some more water, I dropped the temperature really low and it took nearly 10 minutes to get that temperature back up to 180. So we just hit 180. So now I'm gonna set my timer and keep it maintained between 180 and 185 for 30 minutes. All right, and then what I did, because I overdid my jars, I made three extra because I had no idea how many cucumbers were gonna go in each jar. I just pour some brine in there, I'm gonna stick them in the fridge. So the next time I get some cucumbers out of the um, garden, which I will probably later tonight, I'll just chop them up and put them in here and let them sit in the refrigerator, um, just for refrigerator pickles. Or you can just throw these in another water can bath on the stove and um, get them to seal up. And then I'll have more. But I didn't wanna waste the dill that I had gotten in here because of course I can't grow herbs to save my life. So I didn't grow dill, so I had to spend $2 a package on dill at the store, which sucks. Um, next year I will do better with herbs. Um, and that way this is just brine. And I have actually done that before in the past where I bought a package of like Claus and pickles, ate all the pickles, saved the jar. And my girlfriend down the street gave me cucumbers last year. I sliced them up, threw them in the same jar of the brine and it works for refrigerator pickles. And then it just kind of loses its potency um, over time, the more cucumbers you put in there. So it works. So we just made our own. Um, I also purchased some mix. Um, I'm gonna get that and show that to you and share it with you. Okay, so when I was at the store, um, there's Woodman's near me and they had these packets that I'm gonna try next time. But this is Create Zesty Bread and Butter Pickles. It's just a packet, it was like $1.50 for this whole entire package and it comes with all the seasonings inside. You just add water and pickles. This one's Create Kosher Dill Pickles. So I have that one. And then Create Sweet Pickles. So I have that one too. And then at Ace Hardware, Sweet and Tangy Bread and Butter Pickle Mix. So this has all the ingredients that you need in these little bubble pouches. And I guess you add water and cucumbers. And then this one is dill pickle mix. So it's got dill seed I see, um, pepper. I don't know what all those ingredients are. Pre-measured spices and recipe card from the makers of the canning products ball. And your experts at McCormick. So that's pretty cool. So I can make do pickles with these little packets and these were about the same price, $1.50 or so. So that's nice, but I'm gonna use those as well. I'm gonna just try this because I have four slicer cucumbers in the front, four green monster cucumbers in the back, and then I have a row of over 20 cucumber plants at the church and we're gonna see what happens. So I will come back when the 30 minutes is up on my water can bath water bath can pot. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I'll come back. Okie dokie. I'm back. So learning how to be patient with gardening has been a challenge for me. Now being patient <laughs> For that to stay at the right temperature for 30 minutes, that's <laughs> testing my patience too. Ah! Oh! They're done. So I maintained the temperature to 75, 80. To 180 to 185. I had to turn the temperature down a little bit one time because um, it was getting a little hotter than 185, and now we're done. We're done. Get out of the bathtub. Um, 
air bubbles are coming up. I don't know what that means, but there's air bubbles coming out some from something. I think it's the pressure in the jars pushing out air, which I don't know how it's possible if I have a seal and a tight lid. I don't know. I don't understand the chemistry behind it, but now I'm going to use my little handy tool and I'm going to pull them out and put them on the counter. And apparently as they cool, the lids will seal and they'll make a pop. to buy green tea in bulk so I don't have to cut up tea bags. Some of these jars are sizzling. Um, there we go. So that's happening now. Let's wipe the top of that. kitchen and wait for them to pop. When they start popping, I'm going to be so excited. In the meantime, I was just chopping up some strawberries for breakfast. Um, and I'm going to make another video today. I'm going to make some pesto because I have tons of basil that's fresh and ready to go. I need to harvest it, trim it down so that it can regrow. Um, so I'm going to get out the um, food processor, my oil, my garlic, and my pine nuts and my walnuts and um, tons of basil and make some basil. So I'll make another video. Thank you very much for joining me today. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the camera because it's been over 20 minutes. I like to keep my videos short and sweet to at least 20 minutes or shorter. Thank you so much for paying attention to my video and lasting this long with me. It might be a little bit shorter if I edit it. I've never learned how to edit a video so I'm going to do that today also. Um, I don't know if you could see my friend in the window. Yes. I do have squirrels <laughs> that are outside eating the peanuts that I put out there. Um, thank you again for joining me today. I really appreciate your time to watch. Um, your comments below would help me if you have any um, recipes that you've used in the past or any uh, tricks that you could share with me that you've done in the past to teach me. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a blessed weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.